In this video, I'm going to share with you five key questions that I've always asked my customers before starting any Power BI development. Let's get started. The first question that you need to ask is, who is going to consume the report? Main reason for that is users will do different things depending on what their role in the organization is. So, for example, if you have to do a report that is going to be consumed by upper management, they will not spend time clicking around. So what they want to have is an overview of how the business is going so they can go about doing their business instead. For them, you would do explanatory reports. So you would do reports that lay out everything without having to click anything, okay? So probably they will have like quarterly reports or they will have like yearly reports and they are not going to click on anything. If you are doing this for a marketing team or an engineering team or a quality team, they probably want to dig down into the data. And for them, you will have to do exploratory reports. You will put a ton of slicers that will allow them to ask questions as they arise. If they happen to say, which happens actually very often, that it is for the entire organization, then you need to be tough. You need to continue asking questions. You have two ways to go about that. And one is that you could actually create two reports, one exploratory and one explanatory, and you say this is for upper management, this is for the rest of the organization. They are linked, they use the same database, the same model, the same, it's just that the final look is different, right? Another thing that you could do is to create everything in one if they insist on having just one report. And then you start from explanatory a move to exploratory with filters, read throughs, things like that. Okay, so there are ways you can actually combine both, but you need to always have the audience in mind when you're creating a report. My second question is always what is the data literacy level of the audience looking at the report, so consuming the report? And the main reason for that is because there are charts, visualizations that are very, not complicated, but not, it's just they are not common. And a lot of people cannot and will not be able to read them. And your job as a report designer is to make sure that you can convey efficiently information. So if you are doing charts that nobody will understand, what's the point, right? So you need to make sure that you understand what the data literacy level actually is. And they might not be able to tell you right away, but you can actually, by asking questions and through the development of the report, understand what it actually is. Doing design and see what questions come back, and then you adjust as you go, so you don't need to like pin it directly. So if they are not able to tell you what the data literacy level is, you can actually test the person that you're talking to and say, okay, do you know what a waterfall chart is? Do you know what a, I don't know, radial chart looks like? You, you can, you know, go through different charts and see if they actually understand it. Obviously, you have to be very careful because you don't want to shame anybody. It's not the point. But you just want to understand where you draw the line as to how advanced your reports can be. Now, there are going to be scenarios where you know that this specific chart isn't. It just shows in a way that no other chart will do, but it's a very uncommon chart type. For those scenarios, what I would do and always do is to explain the chart within the chart, if possible. If not, I would have like a question mark with within the report, a, a page just explaining how the chart works, or maybe a link somewhere that would explain how the chart works, or just give the insights directly on the title of the chart. So even if they don't read it, they can still understand it kind of. So obviously, I mean, we need to educate people to be able to learn more advanced charts, but there's, there's a time and a place for that. So if you feel that a chart needs to be there, make sure you explain it. Otherwise, bar charts, line charts, you know, 
pie chart will do the work best. The next question that I always ask in the beginning of the project, it might seem a bit weird, is how often do you refresh your data? Or are you expecting to refresh your data? <laughs> often they are different. Um, the reason why I ask this early in the project is because it will determine the granularity of the data. So if they want to refresh daily, you will need to have daily data. If they want to refresh hourly, for example, in manufacturing, you will have to you know, have hourly data and be able to refresh it with all the technical implications that that has. Obviously, if you have millions of rows and you want to have hourly data, your report design is going to be completely different than if you have monthly or yearly data or your quarterly data. So knowing early on how often they want to refresh the data, it will set what technical methods you need to use in order to manage the data at that level. Very, very important. Also, you need to understand if they are wanting to have to schedule refresh it, and if they want to schedule refresh it, are they able to install a gateway? You know, set the... Uh, expectations for the project, the technical expectations for the project early on. Sometimes they are not able to have gateways, but they still want to have um, to schedule a refresh it, and then you have to move the data maybe to shore, and then you have to do that first. And yeah, you get it, right? So understand how often they want to refresh the data is quite critical, in my opinion, early on with the project. Next question is, how are they going to consume the report? And you're like, what do you mean how? You're like, well, there are different ways you can do it. I have created Power BI reports that are exclusively consumed on PDF form. There are very valid and good reasons for that, to, to be honest. So they have a good case. So if it is a PDF report, if it is going to be sent in an email as a snapshot every week or every month, the requirements for how you design the report will be different as if there is uh, consumed, for example, on Power BI service or on the mobile. Okay, Because you have the interactivity factor in one and you won't have it on the other one. So you need to know if I put a slicer here, would anybody be able to click it? Obviously, if they are going to print this thing, nobody's going to be able to click the slicer, so it will not help having it there. Then you will have to create a page for every country or every product or whatever it is that you're doing. Okay, so you need to know that because it will impact how you design your reports. And the last question is always, where are you going to consume your reports? And you will say like, okay, what do you mean with where? Well, let's say that you are doing a report for salespeople that are always out with customers you need to have a mobile report. You need to have a report that they will be able to see on the flight. They sit there in a meeting with the customer and they want to know that particular customer sales and what products they bought and what's the best product. They, they need to be able to do it on the fly, either on a mobile phone or a tablet, okay? So you need to be able to design for that. Remember that Power BI reports are not great on mobile just because they have, there are no mobile visualizations mainly. So you need to be very careful about what you design and how you design it in order for people with fat fingers to be able to click on things, right? So to summarize what we said on the video, you need to know who is looking at the report. You need to know the data literacy level of the people looking at the report. You need to know how often they will want to see new data refreshed on the report. Obviously, you need to know how much data it is. Very, very important. You will need to know how they are going to consume the reports. Is it going to be a printed format or is it going to be online, interactive or not? And you need to know where will they consume it. Are they going to use small devices like mobile phones or are they going to be able to do it in, in computers, in an app? Yeah. So that will set the technical parameters for you to create the report. Then you know, obviously you need to start talking about what would you like to see, like what are the insights that you are hoping to uncover from your data. But that's another story for another video. So 
I hope this was useful. Let me know what questions do you ask before you start a project. And I will see you again on the next video.